Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad you're here joining us in person or online. If you have in your hands, hopefully, if you're in the room, communion. If you're at home, I hope you have it set before you. If not, now or in a little bit is a good time to sneak to the back of the sanctuary to grab some or to go get that uh, at home. Also, if you're watching us online this morning, You'll notice that there it's kind of a stripped-down service this morning. You won't see as much on the screen because our computer crashed last week, and so we had to replace it. Guess what? We have to wait. It's crazy. We want everything now, don't we? Uh, but we don't get that. So while we wait for the new computer to arrive, uh, we're using an old one just to crutch us along this morning, and so you'll see kind of a, a simplified version of worship this morning, but we're glad uh, that you will be joining us there, and then it should be new and improved by next Sunday. Bob and I are both nodding along with great hope. Uh, with that, that's all of our announcements. I invite you to rise. We continue with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Thanks to Karen for reading Psalm 23 this morning. That was very it was very nice. I liked it. Uh, Jesus says in the gospel this morning that I have other sheep who do not belong to this flock. And he says, I must bring them also. You ever caught that when you hear that part? It caught me off guard this week. So the, and it made me think about the times that I've thought, these are mine. And I'm going to protect all of them, because if you know me as a father, I'm like a big bear, and uh, my cubs come close to me. My children are going to be mortified that I said that out loud. But I remember when our son was an infant, and he was in the hospital, he was just barely three months, and he had caught a virus, 
And so we had to in, put him in the hospital for a day. And the one nurse poked at his little hand and poked at his foot to try and find a vein. And then she started poking on his head. And I said, what are you doing? And I started lunging forward. I don't know why, but I did. And then the other nurse saw the fear in my eyes and she put her hands up like this on my shoulders and she goes, it's okay, dad. There's a big vein in the top of his head that's way easier to get to. Her leadership calmed me down. Papa Bear went back to his corner of the hospital room and everything was okay. But sometimes we get in such a hurry to make ourselves judge and jury, executioner and the crowd, and we need to think of this verse, that the good shepherd is who the good shepherd is, the one who guides, corrals, protects, leads the sheep. Because whether we like to think about it or not, leadership matters. And the older I get, the more I long for that truth to be a basic human understanding. Leadership matters, not because it gets us what we always want, but because it often leads us where we need to be. True leadership meets us where we are, but rarely leaves us there. Good leaders allow us to function. Great leaders give us permission to thrive. Jesus does that time and time and time again. Leads people to new places for their own lives. Jesus gives people in the Bible the understanding that they are not as others define them, but only as God defines them. Jesus takes the broken and gifts them healing. Jesus takes the lost and leads them back to the flock. Jesus takes the dirty and matted ones and washes them clean. This is not to say that Jesus makes all people the same. Far from it. I want you to hear that. Jesus doesn't make all people the same. Far from it. Never in Jesus' leadership does he ask his disciples, those guys following him around everywhere he goes, he never asks them to be the same. He asks them to be of one mind, yes, but that's the goal, that we become focused on the same truth, Jesus, and that the path toward the goal is often varied and beautiful. Too often people see this story of the Good Shepherd and they interpret it as the work of sameness, of finding our goals, our personalities, and our struggles the same. <laughs> that doesn't happen. I don't know if you know anybody else in the world that's following the exact same path as you, but it's rare. Not even spouses follow the exact same path all of the time. And Jesus does know this. God never asks of us to follow the same path toward Jesus, nor does the Holy Spirit work in each of us the same fire. Jesus calls and we listen. Well, sometimes we listen. Other times we're like the lost sheep. The good shepherd is the leader we need to look toward in finding our path home. Jesus the good shepherd. I'm sure you can think of a good leader in your life. I'm not talking about a national leader. I'm talking about a leader that you know personally, a leader that you've worked with, a leader that you've had conversations with. Maybe you call them a mentor. They've set goals with you. They have led you, mentored you along the way. Do you have one in your mind? I have some. Some stand out as quality mentors and leaders, others, not so much. Leaders often offer gifts and tips and advice that I know that I can look at it and say, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do when I'm their age. But now I am that age, and so now I have to act like it. Or I look at them and go, <laughs> well, I'm not going to do that one. Have we had a leader like that in our lives? For sure. Belinda was my first boss out of college. And now she's a leadership coach, so we can assume that she's pretty good. But she offered up the best advice as leadership comes. Be prepared, she said. Don't come into my office without a solution. We might not use it, but at least you've come to the problem with a possibility and that the two of us are marching in the same direction. Secondly, you spend more time at work than you do at home a lot of times, so let's make the best of the time we have together. Those two things may sound simple, but they have proven to be very effective leadership tools that work whether you're a supervisor or the supervised, the president or the hourly employee. Be prepared and find some way to enjoy one another. Also ringing in my ears this morning is my Uncle Tom's voice. 
I hear him say, find a job that you love to get out of bed to do. And I said, every day? And he said, well, there's some days that I don't want to get out of bed either. But not because of your job. If that ever happens, keep looking. The leadership in my family and supervisors has led me to this place where I continue to enjoy serving you and God's people through the church. What is it for you? What kind of leadership have you had in your life that has shaped you? I want you to think for a moment. What are the skills that you learned from a great leader? What are the key tools that you use to help and value your success? Do you have that person? Someone nod at me. I know it's a cloudy, gloomy day, but someone nod at me. Okay, good. At least I got it from the front row. Now, I want you to take that name, and I want you to look to the person you're sitting with or someone who's sitting close to you, and I want you to say their first name to that other person right now. And if you're online, you can type it into the comment section, or you can tell someone you're worshiping with. You can text somebody. But here's the idea. I want you to say that name, and then after church this morning, on your drive home or on a phone call later, I want you to explain to the other person why that name is important to you, why that person is important to you. When you were thinking of that leader in your life, when you were thinking of that leader in your life, did you hear that leader's voice whisper in your ear, do whatever you can to make lots and lots of money? Or did you hear, work as many hours as possible and ignore your family? No. Some of us have those regrets in our life, but rarely do good leaders invite us to do those kinds of things. Likely, if your mentor is like my mentor and your mentor is like Jesus who follows Jesus, you found a leader who is relational. Someone who taught you that it's not about the money necessarily, but that the money follows the relationship. Relationships bring us together. The Great Shepherd talks about the work of the people, the love, the forgiveness, the generosity, the grace that people will share with one another through him that brings us together. Through Christ, we begin to understand and more brightly realize the value of relationships in growing the kingdom of God. To follow the Good Shepherd is to allow ourselves the gift to become a fuller part of the flock. When we form deep relationships, we most reflect the work of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. When we find ways to bring people together, when we love, honor, respect, and find value in others, especially those we define as different than us, the more likely we are to experience the work of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. The more we allow Christ to lead and we practice following, the more we give an example to others as to what it means to be Christian. The less we try and strangle the life out of anything we find frightening or changing around us, the more we work to understand the beauty found in variety and the more we live out our faith. Being Christian isn't just sitting here on Sunday morning and listening to songs and Bible readings and my ramblings. Those are a decent start. But the real work begins when you have to face the world around you and you have to bite your tongue, or should I say you choose to bite your tongue at something you don't agree with, and you reconsider how to engage in a conversation rather than pick a fight. The real work begins when you leave this place and you have to confront your own fears and trust that God has surrounded you with good leaders who will guide you back to the flock. The best work begins when we understand and we live out our truth that while we're all on different paths, we're traveling together toward the same kingdom, following the good shepherd who promises to lead us home.
I invite you to please rise as we pray. At the end of each intercession, um, I'll end each petition with, Hear us, O God, and I invite your response. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, bless all who serve as shepherds, Teachers, pastors, therapists, counselors, advisors, parents, mentors, friends. May they experience wisdom, grace, and mercy as they guide and support those around them. Hear us, O God. As we mark yet another Earth Day, we give thanks for your creation and seek your will for how to best steward it. We are thankful for the changing seasons as your creation springs to life after the winter. May we know compassion for all that you have made and seek balance and wisdom in the use of its resources. We pray for all those who work outside, especially those who are starting work in their fields. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for your world. Teach us to be people of hope as we work towards a peaceful, bountiful future as your children throughout the nations. Heal and renew all who ache for a better tomorrow for our world, our communities, our families. May we be tireless in pursuing justice and peace as we keep an eye to you for guidance, encouragement, strength, and love. Hear us, O God. You offer us many kinds of healing. We pray especially for those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for all of those on our prayer list. We include Julie Olson and all those whom we name in our hearts before you now. Hear us, O God. We entrust all for whom we pray to your never-failing mercy and love, as you've shown it in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share a socially distant sign of that peace with one another. Now would also be a suitable time to gather your communion elements uh, if you've not already done so. Uh, so you can take those in your hands as we prepare for our meal this morning. The Lord be with you. O God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, the earth is full of your glory. O God triune, you took on our flesh and Jesus our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We praise his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals know the earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with your love for this earth. We remember that on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it for them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you 
and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. And again, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Just as he taught us to gather at the table, Jesus also taught us to pray. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. This is the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. And so I invite you to share in that meal now. May this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and always. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your Spirit, that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with our closing song. Jesus, blessed Jesus. 
We have a couple ending announcements. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary with us right now, the sanctuary doesn't get officially cleaned and disinfected until Tuesday morning, and we've been finding uh, a handful of communion cups left over. Guess what? Bugs love leftover communion just as much as you love communion. Uh, so if you could take that little cup with you and throw it away in one of the trash cans back in the narthex, you'd be a big help to us and uh, the exterminator build that would follow if we didn't. And then also we have an announcement from our youth this morning. Hello, my name is Jaylee and this is Anthony. We are, to, we are here selling pastry puffins for our church trip to the Boundary Waters in June. And we will be selling after the service and today is our last day selling. If you do not want to buy one, donations will be heavily appreciated. Thank you to all who have already donated to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you missed part of it, she said, if you don't want to buy pastry, pastry puffins, there's nothing stopping you from just giving them money. They won't say anything other than, thank you so much. And then you don't have to worry about picking anything up in a few weeks. Just to clarify, puffins are pastries, not small flightless birds. So, um, I mean, they are that, they are too, that too. But that's not what you're ordering. So, I invite you to please rise. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ. May the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.